I'm Ankit Agarwal from Solite Technologies. Um, we'll spend some time going into what we think is India's digital backbone. But I think I just want to start by just really sharing our excitement uh, where we really think this is India's time. As I think Ranbir Kapoor says, apna uh, time aega. I think this is our time to shine. I think the Kranti, which our Prime Minister was talking about, I think it's here now. And I really believe that it's not just about faster speeds. It's not just key, you know, we can, we can browse faster or watch some videos faster. I think there's a lot more that can happen with 5G. I think there's a lot to be done for a common man to believe it. Uh, but that's really something I wanted to show in, in my slides. It's the story is not just about where we are today. I think what we wanted to show is actually on the back of some amazing startups that we already have in India and some companies around the world, how we are already starting to see 5G impact various sectors. So we've taken some examples of healthcare, education, agriculture, manufacturing. We really want to showcase to all of you and want to create a belief more than anything that 5G is here, 5G is real, and 5G will make a massive impact to our country. So really, I think at the heart of you know, the digital backbone, I think it's very clear that 5G is for every Indian, but also it's for every enterprise. Um, it really is going to be about transforming the quality of life, particularly in education and healthcare. It's also about modernizing agriculture, which continues to be the single largest source of employment in our country, but disproportionately underrepresents in terms of impact to our GDP. So I think that's something which will be very exciting, and we'll give some examples of where it can help. And then also Industry 4.0 that we spoke of. I think there's a lot to be done in terms of our manufacturing sector. We heard some comments from Sunil Mittal today of taking Indian manufacturing forward. But I think really at the core of what 5G can do for enterprises, how can it really improve our efficiencies? And we'll look at some numbers. I'm a Marwadi by heart, so I have to talk about numbers. And we'll get into some of that. So just to give you a context, what we really see is, you know, where are we today? So everything you'll see on my slides, left side is where we are today, but also some very exciting data points of what's already happening that we should all be very proud of. So if you see, clearly infant mortality, we're not in a good shape as a country. We have 7x the time of infant mortality compared to OECD countries. And we have a real issue where essentially our best doctors are really in the cities. And we have also a sure number of doctors in our cities versus rural India. And the ratio of four to one, right? That's really a massive challenge. How do you bridge that challenge? One thing we can be extremely proud of is probably at the back of COVID, all of this got accelerated at a rapid pace. And I think it's only going to increase. We had 6.5 crore number of patients that was served by the government of India's e-Sanjeevni platform. And then we had more than 50% of the people who got served by Practo in terms of 17 crore customers that were actually in non-metros. So I think this is something very interesting to see as a trend, that it's not about adoption, it's not about when it will happen. There are already cases that on the back of very good connectivity that was on the back of 4G, that we already saw some very, very massive impact on our society. Second part, something very close to my heart in terms of transforming education. So what's, what's the stat today? Where are we at? So something that was very, very concerning to see, I was really surprised with this number. 80%, so that's four out of five children uh, aged between five to, uh, five to 18 years actually missed formal education during COVID. So I think that's really, really concerning that such a large portion of our population, of our kids, were not able to get proper education. And at, at the same time, when you talk to corporate leaders, especially in India today, they say that skill is a massive challenge in our workforce. And how do you do skill development at scale and combine that with the fact that we have massive work from home? How do you make all of that happen? Again, I think there's some great examples there. Um, we've had about 14 million uh, people sign up for courses on Coursera. And then another platform where 1.7 million people on Gavi platform. And then something that we are proud of at STL, that we've taken a target of 1 million women to be trained by STL. We have an STL Academy. And we've partnered with NASCOM uh, to enable 5G uh, training for women across India. Just some examples, again, of startups. Uh, a startup called Kida, interestingly, Gavi and Baijus, which we all know. Uh, so just some amazing work that's already starting to happen. And then if you think of 
how they will further empower with 5G kind of uh, technology, high capacity, low latency. I think the whole education experience will go to the next level. So I think I uh, encourage you to look at this photo very closely. This is a photo by John Deere. There's something missing in the photo. And I hope you've guessed it by now, there's a person missing out there. And I think that's, that's really very, very exciting. This is an actual driverless tractor that John Deere has launched and is active now in the US and, and parts of Europe. The reason I say this is that we have farmers dying every year in India in the, in the heat. Where my mother comes from is in Akola in Maharashtra, amongst the highest heat waves in the year. Every year when I visit Akola, you have farmers dying just because they need to plow their land in 45, 50 degrees temperature, right? What if we can bring some of these solutions that already exist in the world? If we can create a private LTE network in the farmland, it's very easy to pull off now. We have the solutions, HTL has the solutions. We combine them with the network, with the spectrum that government has now given. I think this is really possible. Why should the farmer go out there and struggle in 50 degrees temperature? He can sit in the comfort of his house and spend more time to figure out the output of his agriculture should go to the best market at the best prices. And then just in terms of manufacturing, uh, even Sunil Mithal talked about how India can become a manufacturing hub for the world. Uh, just to let you know, STL itself, we're one of the few companies in the world where we manufacture our optical fiber and we supply to 120 countries. This is a real high-tech technology product with 750 patents. One thing to understand about India, where we are today, the average labor productivity is one-eighth of the US. That's massive, right? That's a huge problem that we have. And if you think about the fact that we have such a massive labor population, what could be the impact if, if our labor population could get as productive as the US? The second part is, as I think one of the use cases also came up in terms of just safety. So we have six and a half thousand uh, deaths due to industrial accidents um, in the last five years. And again, I think that's something for me personally is very, very important. Can we use these technologies using AI, using machine learning, vision learning? to prevent some of these accidents. So I think the numbers are pretty massive. Um, I think we heard this from Geo earlier today as well. Uh, about $9 billion in terms of size of IoT market by 2025. That's not far away, that's three years away. And then really in terms of improvement and labor efficiency, I think at the very least, we ourselves in our own factories in Aurangabad and Silvasa see about 25% improvement in our efficiency. Again, some very interesting uh, startups I encourage you to look at. Ace Robotics, uh, Scrap, Namo, many others which are actually making impact in India already. So fundamentally, we believe that to build India's digital backbone, fundamentally, as you could see from everyone on the stage here in the morning, we have the intent. All the big boys were on stage, we have the capital. That's not a constraint anymore. And obviously, the government themselves are investing close to $12 billion on BharatNet. So I think there's no question anymore of intent or capital. I think it really comes down to very, very strong execution on the ground. In our own view, today India deploys about 20 million fiber kilometers. We all know the stats, about 30-35% of our towers are connected on fiber. This just requires a massive shift and we can't wait anymore. In our own view, the 20 million fiber kilometers needs to go to about 60 million fiber kilometers per year. So we're talking about a 3x jump in the fiber that needs to get deployed per year in India. And again, to put it in context, while we deploy 20 million fiber per year, China deploys almost 12 times, I'll repeat that, China deploys 12 times the amount of fiber as India does for largely the same population, right? In fact, we have a younger population. So it's very fascinating to hear that that's the kind of network that needs to get built out. I have not put a 12x for India knowing our realities, but at least in our view, 3x needs to happen ASAP in this year itself and going forward. The second part that we believe in terms of tower connectivity, especially looking at the latency requirements, broadly I think we need to go from 50 milliseconds to about 5 to 10 milliseconds. And our speed, we have kind of slow 4G in India today, so we need to go from about 15, 20 Mbps to at least 80 to 100 Mbps. All of that needs our tower fiberization to at least go from 30-35% to about 80% in my view. Ideally, looking at my own business, it should at least go to 100%. So I think it's very clear the task is cut out for all of us as industry. The operators are, are going full swing in terms of putting the network out. And we are very excited as STL. We want to make this happen for the country. 
I think the impact is clearly, clearly going to be massive, whether you talk of at least a one trillion impact on digital economy or India going to the five trillion number. End of the day, it's the execution on the ground that will make this happen. And I really hope that this, this is, is the future. There's no question in my mind that if we work together as industry, as operators, and as government, we can make it happen. Jai Hind. Thank you.